Okay, earlier on, I didn't act... I've read this already, but I didn't read it back when I first watched and I didn't watch it until after I finished editing the video of my reaction to this, where it's talking about Acheron's planet being actually destroyed seemingly, and probably by whatever turned her into what she presently is. It's interesting that the artwork that we saw depicted her with horns, which would maybe imply that she was a Kami? Or she is one of the ones who could use the power of Takamagahara, which was used to save the masses. It implies either she's the potential extreme on one side or the extreme on another. And then here, I have not read this yet. I saw the link on Twitter and I do want to read it though. And it's talking about how eminent is a born, hopefully. <laughs> so if mortals receiving the power, the grace of an Aeon and grasping for the power of paths are viewed as a singular shattered firm, then the mighty feats of Aeons driving their paths onwards can be likened to a towering tsunami, fair enough. So while not completely subservient, they are as good as emissaries of the Aeons' wills in everyone else's eyes and ooh, this is fun. Okay, they have different attitudes towards their emanators, and the methods in which they grant power also vary significantly. Some regard their emanators as extensions of themselves. That feels like it would kind of link to what's going on with the harmony and some of the weird, like what the weird stuff that's in that memory bubble relating to it kind of ties into how the harmony seems to have a relationship with all of its followers. And some Aeons have no intention of creating emanators, and there are even Aeons who just do as they please. Uh, Aeons that do as they please are definitely aha. <laughs> Meanwhile, no intention of creating seems like it could apply to Acheron's situation. Ix, the, the idea in Ahili is not caring about anything and being fine with a potential end. That just seems very fitting. Uh, factions that use martial will, alright, um... Hmm... Rumors are about emanators across the universe are rife and they should not all be believed. Here I will list some reputable sources that may help educate you. Oh, look at the smile of the darn hung. Uh, antimatter, wonderful. Uh, board and as a commander, okay. Oh, they call it the blemished one. Okay, neat. I don't know if I've seen that title or if I don't know where I've seen it or if I've seen that title before. I don't recognize it though. Um, the Aeon will spare their lives and delay their annihilation and give them the power of destruction. Okay, so selection. Um, they are executioners, all artists of war. Yeah, makes very much sense. Meanwhile, this is something we all wondered about if every single one of the generals would count as an emanator because we still don't know this for sure. So let's have a look. After Pun formed a powerful army known as the Cloud Knights, yes. Um, the generals who command along with the marshal. Okay, so it's mentioning them specifically, meaning they're likely emanators. Good. The family. Okay, here's where we're going to potentially see weird stuff. Uh, the concept of harmonic strings is defined in the harmony hymns. That was... Say that five times over, both of those two sets of words, and see if you get it right. That almost messed me up and tongue-tied me. Um... There are multiple embodiments of sheep in the down-to-earth virtues that enable harmony. Regardless of whether you place yourself under the family's rule, the Aeon will look favorably upon you so long as you carry out these good deeds. On worlds ruled by the family, the members often gather in large groups to engage in virtuous acts and play harmonious music. The thousands of tiny ropes come together to form a united string, welcoming the embodiment of the harmony to manifest on the mortal plane. Okay, so technically anyone can summon her. If there's enough voices that are calling for harmony, Jipe can technically appear. 
They never shied away from promoting their great names of the great names of the embodiments of the Thousand Faced God. Okay, so there's multiple of them. Eleven Ellen Eve, the commander of the Eternal Centurion, Dominica Dominicus, the wisher of the harmonious chorus, Constantina, the singer of the pan an acoustic theatre and Beatrice, the merrymaker of the blissful ball. However, few have ever witnessed their radiance, their radiant presence going beyond the boundary of the family. Okay, so the singer obviously ties into kind of Robin and it maybe explain the cage-like imagery going on with her, since she clearly has a very unique ability with sinking us to the dream. So it kind of makes me think that she's an emanator or connected somehow to the idea of what happens with the conjuring of the manifestation of this entity. Um, these do not follow any specific mortal but are facets of sheep it and can assume the form of any member of the family when necessary. So yeah, it ties in. It can technically be any of them but Robin makes a lot more sense than quite a few of us. Um, Interastral Peace Corporation. Okay. This might explain some fun things since, you know, we currently have um, that strange rock that um, Aventurine grabs and then is boss form. So, you know. Um, as the largest financial body of the cosmos and a discipline of the Amber Lord, must believe that their eminence must exist within the IPC. Would make sense. However, according to the Express's current data bank intel, only two emanators of the preservation are confirmed. Uh, Tara Van Keen of the Seven Board of Trustees members and Diamond, Chief of the Strategic Investment Department. Information on others are locked behind layers of encryption, with no other sources available. So Diamond obviously has a connection. There is another group named the Ten Stone Hearts, an elite team reporting directly to Diamond. The official team within the corporation for this role is called Non-Performing Asset Liquidation Specialist. Yes, we know about these. Um, some credible sources um, suggest that the Ten Stone Hearts have de demonstrate unbelievable power related to the preservation on certain occasions, whether this power originates from the members themselves or the cornerstones they possess. So is the rock that we saw the cornerstone and the thing that um, Ratio was grilling Aventurine for losing access to? However, since Diamond is the only one of the few confirmed emanators of preservation within the IPC, this power light is likely related to that fact. So they aren't emanators themselves, or at least in to our knowledge they're not and based on the info intel provided in game to the members of the cast they're not but diamond is and he and they have power over the ten corn the ten stone hearts so are they able to pass that power down and no interesting self annihilator okay this terminology comes up again this is fun uh, a group that has lost their meaning of existence when they carelessly stepped into Ix, the Nihility Shadow. Okay, this is fun. The Shadow of the Nihility covers the stars equally, and self annihilators may form in any world. Ouch, that sucks. These poor souls share one thing in common. Their various existential properties, such as corporeal body, mental cognition, and personal memories, will gradually fade away in their journey of self-annihilation. Okay, so this is confirming what Acheron is. Great! Some self-annihilators have their stin skin turning into something like rotten wood full of holes and scars. Some have their endo endocrine systems disrupted, but coming unable to distinguish between pleasure and pain and turning numb to everything. Some lose their memories, others lose their senses. So memories, we know who that applies to, is as if they've been deprived of something of meaning of their lives by some entity and can only keep watching in dreams and illusions as their own form disappears into a black hole at the end of the horizon. Wow, okay. 
Uh, however, some have fought back. We knew about the Doctors of Chaos because they're in the data bank already, and it does actually mention the term self annihilator in there. Um, moreover, some of them rely on strong convictions to try to break the curse and annihilate the roots by slaying the, the aeon that slumbers in the abyss. How would you slay a black hole? How would you slay a black hole? Uh? Dr. Primitive, number 64, once asked before his disappearance, if Ix is truly unresponsive to the universe, how could the path of Nihili exist to this day? Perhaps, as a, a self annihilator is aimlessly traversed the cosmos, they are also casting the shadow of the Aeon around the universe. As for the few who can single-handedly withstand the encroachment of Nihility on their own existences, their journey of self-annihilation is drawn out into infinity, as the road they walk is like the shadow, a shadow of Ix cast in the world. Ooh. So the implication is that Acheron will never truly disappear then because she's able to resist it. The reason why she can maybe resist it, we don't know. And we don't know how they're capable of doing so because of the way that black holes exist like technically time doesn't move within one so it makes sense why if it doesn't eventually destroy you that you're just stuck how interesting that's a really cool bit of info here i, I like this now the last bit i've been anticipating looking at this since i got the notification on my phone about this getting uploaded yes I'm curious what that text underneath her name actually means. Fair. So, I'm not interested in- Yeah, this is the stuff I want. I was about to say, not really interested in what this says, because we kind of know roughly what she does anyway. Uh, a drifter claiming to be a galaxy ranger. Like, this is the thing people don't seem to get. It's not just people claiming she's galaxy ranger. She also claims it. She just uses it in order to get around. So her true name is unknown. Well, <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Let's hope in the story they actually use them. <laughs> they just say outright, "May please do." Um, as she le walks through the cosmos alone, carrying her long sword, through a loop, the aloof and tack turn, her blade flickers out like lashing lightning, and yet she always strikes with a scabbard, never drawing the sword free. Well, based on her animations, when she does that, things don't go well. And even when she doesn't do that, things don't go well. In the hazy memories of my ho distant hometown, there were often heavy thunderstorms. Fearing their makeup would be ruined by the rain, the girls carried makeup with them wherever they went. I have no reason to do so anymore, but the habit still remains. Neat! So we learn things about her and her little habits that's sweet even though she technically doesn't have memories muscle memory isn't the same you don't actually need to have a memory of something in order to have memory of the physical behavior of doing it because your body will regain those experience will retain those experiences for a very long time if not always depending on what it is uh if one carries a blade it's bound to be used to cut something down my reason for drawing a sword past present or future remains singular fair enough uh hobbies peaches they embody life's delights and pleasures but are equally fragile and short-lived such regret is inevitable so let it be never turn back the path behind is gone neat fair enough oh this is cool okay red only what a name um, when the battle starts, immediately game number of slash dream applied by a certain number of crimson knot stacks. So those are the things that built up towards the ult, aren't they? The one that's in the stack of nine around it. Uh, Talon, atop rainleaf hangs oneness. Okay. And then the Abyss. When there are one or two Nihili characters other than Acheron in the team, the damage dealt by Acheron's basic skill and ultimate additionally increased by a certain amount. Very cool. Okay, so we've got Nihili only comps, which, to be fair, Kafka kind of forced you into at least having one of a Nihili character with you, and with Black Swan being the best option. This is forcing two. Hmm... 
Okay, so that means that we can't really run a buffer unless we want to throw away our sustain, which is unlikely because we kind of need the sustain. Fair. Um, Thundercore. When rain blade, when the rain blade from Acheron's ult emit, hits an enemy target with crimson, not her damage increases. Good, nice. When sticking, uh, um, stacking up to a maximum number of times and lasting for a certain number of turns. Fair enough. Uh, when Stygian Resurge triggers and additionally deals damage a certain number of times. Fair enough. Um, each time lightning damage equal... Each time each time deals lightning damage equal and is viewed as a part of the ultimate. Okay. Um, slash Dreams Crime Red. Sweet. That's a cool name. Um, I've got tons of these just in passing from farming. Got those already available, sweet. So what about her? Hmm. I should be pre-farmed full then. Let's see you. Okay, eating a peach. Fair. Um. Just the one. Fair. Look how cool that looks. Yeah. Okay, um, quadrat quadrivalent, uh, quadrivalent ascendance. God, kill me. Um, immediately attacks the enemy, gains it um, at the start of each wave, deals lightning damage to all enemies, reduces toughness of them all, irrespective of weakness types. Nice. <laughs> um, enemies with their weakness broken in this way will trigger the lightning weakness brick effect. Fair enough, so it still counts. Um... Wait, does it apply to technically everyone then? So if anyone breaks the weakness of an enemy, it'll always be the lightning break effect that triggers in that state. That's neat, fair enough. Um, when it does it, she obtains one point of slash dreams after she uses her ultimate and applies one stack of Crimson Knot. So Crimson Knot is... Isn't Crimson Knot the thing that's um, giving us her like stacks towards her ult and uh, no um enemies who aren't hit won't consume technique points you're allowed to miss unlike with us okay that's nice attacking non normal enemies will instantly defeat them thanks acheron yeah she just hits with the scabbard what a badass she doesn't care fair uh talent yeah seal is um <laughs> ult in a skill funny um when Slash Dreams reaches us up a little... So, Atop Rain Leaf Hangs Oneness is the name of that one. Um, Octobolt Flash. Okay, sweet. This. Slash Dreams Cry is... Slash Dreams Cries in Red. Is this a reference to, um... To Honkai World Diva? Or no? It'd be cool if it is. Um... Yeah, that's all we get. That's cool. A lot of info today. Greatly appreciate that. Sweet. Looking forward to it.